Good morning and uh, welcome on the last Idea Statica Summer Series webinar. Uh, today we will the webinar will be dedicated to a code check of a deep beam. Uh, yeah, my name is Lucas. Uh, I'm a product engineer in company Idea Statica, and I will guide you through through this through this session. Uh, we are we are using uh, go to webinar platform, so uh, you are muted by default. Uh, so if you would like to drop some question, so please uh, use the question question panel uh, on the right side uh, of the of the screen. Uh, something something to the agenda. Uh, we will start uh, briefly about the fury, which is behind. Uh, we will show, or I, I would like to show you uh, the geometry and the modeling in the Ideastica detail, uh, how to reinforce it, and uh, some outputs, post-processing, and we will sum it up with some, with some uh, resolution. So I will turn off my camera, and yeah, we will start. We will start with the theory which is which is behind. So uh, generally, uh, what is it a D beam? Uh, where are the boundary for the solution according to the beam theory or D beam theory? Uh, there is some some rules that uh, if uh, the high of the of the section, uh, the ratio between the high and the length is uh, lower than 0 0.5, so uh, you can calculate uh, this beam uh, according to the beam theory, uh, according to the rules in the error code in the codes. Um, uh, but if uh, the high or the ratio between the high of the section or yeah high of the section uh, and the length uh, is higher than 0 0.5, uh, you should be aware of the fact that uh, the Bernoulli Navier hypothesis is not valid, uh, and uh, there should be take into account a different type of the analysis. You should uh, calculate it like a wall because because uh, the normal stress. Uh, it's visible on the right part, right part of the sc uh, screen. is uh, has a different trend. It's not linear. Uh, you can see a little bit of nonlinear trend, and also the tensile zone is uh, is lower than than the compression one. So the beam fury is not valid there. <clears throat> uh, typically, area where you can find um, the deep beams uh, are garage or multi-store buildings. Uh, so it's a typical detail which uh, is, uh, let's say, uh, feasible on every on every uh, structure like this. <clears throat> Some uh, characteristic properties uh, of um, uh, of the deep beams. Uh, generally, it's a discontinuity region. So uh, we should solve it in a different way. Uh, we have generally two approaches. Uh, we can we can start uh, with a linear or nonlinear model. Uh, you can see uh, from the from the pictures that uh, the linear model and the stratum tie, which is uh, which is drawn behind, um, has a different compression zone than the than the nonlinear model. Yeah, because of on the nonlinear model there are some cracks and changing of the stiffnesses, so uh, the lever arm is also higher and uh, the compression the compression zone uh, is uh, going to be going to be um, decreased decreased and yeah and also the angle of the compression struts uh, has been changed. So uh, you have two approaches. How I mentioned at first you can use the linear model, uh, draw the strut and tie. And uh, from the principal stresses on the on the walls, uh, you can you can um, draw your strut and tie, uh, design design the reinforcement, and do the code check according to the ultimate limit states. Or you can use a nonlinear solution. Uh, this is this is uh, our goal today, and uh, where we will consider some material nonlinearity coupling between the reinforcement and the concrete. Uh, and uh, we will also do the code checks uh, for service elevated limit state because this is very important to uh, know to know uh, how cracks are there and and many more. So uh, let's go in uh, to the model. <clears throat> this is this is our geometry. Uh, it's a real example. This is a deep beam from the real structure. 
uh, the structure has uh, free uh, free levels or free stories um, and uh, the beep, deep beams has uh, the length 5.2 meters the high is 3.65 and uh, the thickness the thickness of uh, the deep beam is uh, 0.3 meters uh, as you can see from the drawing uh, in the upper upper right corner, uh, the deep beam is stored uh, on the circular columns. So uh, we will model, will model, uh, we won't be modeling um, the columns, but we will use the support uh, instead of it. So uh, let's go into the application. So I will run application Idea Statica. can see this is our uh, first insight uh, you will you will select the concrete uh, detail <clears throat> and uh, yeah the application will appear and uh, we will start with a new project if you select the new project uh, there will appear uh, some discontinuity region wizard where uh, at first is uh, really important to select the code uh, we will use euro code or uh, but uh, you have the option to use uh, aci also uh, select a concrete grade c30 slash 37 also there is the option to select from the library from the library of um, existing concrete grades and uh, also reinforce reinforcement b500 b uh, like a default uh, generally, uh, it's we can we can select the concrete cover uh, of the global detail and uh, select from the templates. Uh, we will start with the general input and uh, show the procedure from the from the scratch. So at first, you will see a geometry in the preprocessor so uh, I have to add a new entity and from the new entity I will select I will select a wall uh, the wall has a rectangular shape <clears throat> with uh, some predefined like default parameters like uh, width and the height and the thickness so um, I will only rearrange uh, dimensions. So 5.2 meters uh, is the width. The height is uh, 3.65, and uh, yeah, the thickness is 0 .0 .0 0.3, 0 0.3 meters. You can also see how it looks uh, in the 3D rendering uh, if uh, we turn it on in the ribbon. So this is our this is our model in the 3D rendering, how it looks, yeah, this is our wall, our deep beam. Okay, uh, I will turn over to the 2D view and uh, you can see the uh, software warn you that the structure cannot be calculated because there are no boundary conditions. So uh, we have to put boundary conditions. How I mentioned, uh, there are a circular columns with a diameter uh, 400 millimeters, so, um, we create a new support. The support it, mm, we will model it or simulate uh, the support over over the line support option, and the width of the support uh, is zero zero point four meter, and uh, yeah, it will be a fixed hinge. So I will turn off the nonlinearity in the tension <clears throat> and the position on the edge. With using the uh, position on the edge, I can uh change um, the diameter or the length of the support so uh, part of the edge the length is 0 0.4 meters and i have i have defined uh the boundary boundary condition which represent uh the column which is uh, under under the structure uh the next column uh there will be a sliding support so i will use the copy operation um, to copy this current subregion and uh, change or i will release it in the x direction and uh, move it move it uh, about 4.3 meters on the right side so we'll change this x position 
and uh, yeah, it's defined very quickly. So uh, we have we have prepared um, the geometry, and right now we can proceed to to the load definitions. Uh, if you click on the loads or select the loads, uh, there is an uh, option to create load cases and the combinations. Uh, the first load case is automatically defined like a permanent one, uh, and we will move to the load impulses, where uh, we can add another another uh, loads like line loads, point load, line loads, surface load, or the self weight. At first, uh, I will activate the self weight of the structure so it's automatically calculated after that after that i will uh, use another load it will be a line load to, uh, on the top edge of uh, the deep beam uh, with the intensity with the intensity uh, minus 300 kilonewton per meter related to the top edge the next the next load will be uh, also line load and will be related to the right top part of the deep beam because here is a concentration load um, which is uh, representing um, which are representing the column the column which is here on the top edge on the right top edge so uh, it the intensity will be um, minus 650 kilonewton per meter and it won't be uh, over all edge but on the part of the edge so uh, i will select part of the edge the exposition it will be the offset uh, from the right side is uh, 50 millimeters so zero uh 50 millimeters from the right edge it will it's a shifted a little bit and the length will be 0 0.0.4 right now i have uh, defined uh the loads uh like permanent load and uh, the other load cases or load case will be will be variable so i will come back to the load cases and the combinations uh create the second load case which uh, won't be permanent, but will be variable. It's very important to recognize it. <clears throat> it will affect the results. And uh, come back come back to the load impulses and define again the load impulses uh, like line loads uh, with the intensity minus 250 uh, kilonewton per meter but it won't be on the part of the edge but uh, over the whole length i will copy this uh, line load and uh, put the variable loads from the from the from the column so i will change it part of the edge you can see it's automatic it, the, the software automatically remember your uh, last changes but we have to change the intensity on the minus 550 kilonewton per meter so uh, we have predefined uh, the load combi uh, sorry the load cases permanent and the variable I will save it I will save it and um, the code check uh, we, we we have to create the combinations because uh, you know uh, we have two load cases and we have to create the combinations according uh, according to the rules according to the error code right now so one for ultimate limit state and uh, two combinations one for uh, characteristics and uh, one for quasi permanent uh, combination uh, quasi quasi permanent combinations so uh, i will create three combinations I can turn off uh, the load cases. Right now, you can see uh, it's automatically defined that these three combinations are for ultimate limit state. But I will change it. I will change it. We we will go we, we will go over or through the through the span where we added the combinations. Uh, 
and uh, put the partial partial factors. So um, for permanent load 1.35 and for variable 1.5, for combination two, which will be characteristic, I will change the type characteristic. I can keep it one and one according to the according to the rule. Uh, and the last one is a quasi permanent where the variable load will, will have uh, factor 0 0.6. Right now you can see the loads uh, has been uh, increased according to the prescription or according to the partial factors. And this is a uh, load which is going to the solver to, to the calculation. Right now uh, we, can, we can proceed uh, to the reinforcement. Uh, generally, if you don't know how to reinforce it, uh, we have uh, two options. Uh, you can run the linear analysis just really fast and you will see the principle stress and strain uh, if you scale it a little bit. So you will see uh, the areas uh, where is the uh, high concentration of the stresses uh, in the compression. And also if you scale tension, so you will see where is a possibly linear uh, peaks of the, of, of the tangent on the structure. Uh, the next option is a topology optimization. <clears throat> so uh, if you will use it, uh, you will get the most if shaped according to the applied loads. So you will see something what um, um, re what remarks to uh, the strut and tie, but uh, it's not a strut and tie. So uh, this is generally the most stiff shape according to the applied load for combination C1. So we will see that the maximal tensile uh, tensile areas are in the bottom in the bottom of the deep beam. So according to the, assum the assumptions, or also uh, because of the con uh, concentration of the loads on the right part, uh, which is represented by the column. So you will also see uh, some tensile areas uh, in the right part in the right part uh, of the top corner. So uh, let's go to the reinforcement. And uh, before I jump to reinforcement, I would like to move to another slide uh, where um, some books or uh, codes uh, tells you how to reinforce. So we will keep the we will keep the rules according to the code and uh, put the reinforcement according to the standards and uh, see uh, what are the stresses there and uh, yeah, the strains, deflections and the cracks based on the standard standard reinforcement design. <clears throat> so let's go uh, to detail. I can turn off the topology optimization and start uh, with the reinforcement design. Uh, you have two options. Uh, you have uh, the option to import uh, the existing reinforcement, or uh, you can you can create a new reinforcement layout uh, with using this add new entity. Uh, there is there is the option to create a group of bars or the biofabrics. Uh, we will start with a group of bars uh, because I would like to show you how to uh, how to define the the loops the loops uh, in the in the model and um, how to define a perfect anchorage uh, at the end of the at the end of the rebars, how to use that. So uh, we will use a group of bars. At first, we will start uh, reinforcement from the top edge. So I will change it. There will be uh, 12 bars uh, with a distance 300 millimeters. The diameter of uh, each rebar will be 12 millimeter, and uh, I would like to have two bars, two bars in a layer. Uh, according according to the rules, uh, here is some U shape uh, on the side, so we can consider that the rebars are perfectly perfectly anchored. Uh, for perfect anchor, anchoring, uh, we have the type uh, of the anchorage at the end of the rebars, so this is the option which should be used for that. Yeah, it's a perfect bond, so I will keep it. And you can see this is our sign for perfect bond. It looks like this. If I show you the uh, real 3D uh, rendering, so you 
can see this is small small plates uh, at the end at the end of the rebars. So uh, yeah, I will come back to the 2D view and uh, put the vertical rebars. So only copy that and uh, change the edge. I would like to measure it from the left edge. So use uh, the number four and I would like to increase the number of the layers on the 18 to finish, to finish the uh, layout but uh, it won't be perfectly anchored on the top of the edge uh, because here are the big big loops, right? So it will be perfectly anchored in the bottom, but not uh, on the top edge. So uh, I would like to use in the top edge. Um, yeah, so like this, the straight bar, yeah, like this, because I would like to represent this, uh, this U shape, right? It's representing like this. I will come back here. So, um, because of the because of the compression area uh, above the support, so there is uh, required uh, to put some uh, additional reinforcement, which um, which prevent the tension above. Uh, transfers tension above this up above the support so uh, we will we will use it also <clears throat> so I will select a new group of bars uh, it will be related it will be related to uh, the edge number four there will be only six bars six bars in a layer uh, with the distance 200 and uh, it will be it will be only uh, the length will be one meter only so uh, we have to use the part part edge from the beginning so like this and uh, right now it's time to change uh, the shape at the beginning and at the end and you can see you can see in the bottom there is a perfect anchorage, and uh, in the top, in the top uh, there will be there will be also um, the basic anchorage because it's also it's also U shape. Uh, I can copy this uh, reinforcement and shift it uh, to the edge number two, and yeah, it's. Uh, reversely so I have to change it here and uh, of course the anchorage is also reversely so uh, right now I have reinforced uh, the area above uh, the supports and uh, we have seen that the big concentration of the tensile tensile uh, stresses was in the bottom so uh, we will add another reinforcement layout uh, using group of bars and um, there will be, it will be related to the edge number one. There will be only four bars in a layer, uh, distance 150 millimeters between each other, uh, between uh, the layers, and it will be perfectly anchored. And also, it uh, I have to extend it to the edge, to the edge of the beam. So uh, I will use this this option. If we will, if I will, if I will show you how it looks um, in the 3D rendering, so it looks at it this way, and uh, we can we can proceed to the calculation. We'll jump to the check and uh, run the nonlinear analysis. <clears throat> So uh, in the first stage is the mapping of the reinforcement, calculation of the combinations. You can see it's very fast. Uh, it's a really simple structure. So <clears throat> the, the, the nonlinear solution um, is really, really quick. And uh, in the first step, uh, what you will see, you will see uh, if everything passed. 
uh, yeah, for ultimate limit state and the service limit, limit state, everything passed uh, on the 95 or 99%. So uh, we are safe, we are okay. And um, uh, on the right part of the screen, uh, there is there is the maximum or, or peaks of the each entity, like uh, concrete reinforcement of the or uh, the anchorage. Uh, we can uh, to deep dive to more uh, to the more detailed results. Uh, also, you can display the, the reactions uh, because we are using a line support. So uh, you will see how uh, how is the trend of uh, the line support or line reactions. And uh, the model is in the equilibrium, so it means uh, all uh, external loads has been applied. Uh, so has been transferred 100% of the permanent of the, and the variable loads. Uh, let's jump into the strength. Uh, at first, if I turn off this reinforcement, uh, you can see the peak of the stresses. Um, if I turn on here, uh, the principal stress in the compression, uh, the pro you can see that the problematic area is above uh, the um, above the right uh, right support. Here is the peak 18.9. Uh, there is also really good to display the plastic strain uh, and you will see that around this around uh, this area there is a is, um, increasing the plasticity so <clears throat> the concrete is on the plastic branch uh, there is also uh, the other option reinforcement if I turn it on uh, you will see uh, the stress and the strain are represented in the table if I sort it out. Uh, so you will see that the maximum stress is uh, three, uh, 332 megapascals uh, in the right, right up corner. I can turn on the stresses and here is the peak. The peak uh, is caused by the by the concentration force uh, from the from the column, but also uh, according to the linear analysis where the assumption was uh, that the maximal principal stresses will be here uh, yeah there is also a big big uh, stress uh, approximately 300 megapascals <clears throat> so uh, this is for the for the reinforcement uh, for ultimate limit state and for the concrete and uh, yeah right now we can we, we can proceed to the to the stress uh, i mean service limit limit state where uh, here is used the characteristic combinations where is compared the the 60 percent of the uh, strength of the concrete uh, with the relevant stress so uh, here is a 12.9 megapascals also around around the support so this is the critical area <clears throat> We can also distinguish be between the long-term and the short-term uh, behavior of the concrete uh, because you can uh, you can manually put here uh, the creep coefficient, which uh, which can be put to the material models. If you go here, so the default value is 2.5. Uh, you can see creep coefficient is 2.2.5. 2 uh, you can set it uh, according to your own project, but uh, we consider 2.5 creep. If I come back to the code check, so uh, if I turn on the short-term stress in the concrete, it uh, will be very uh, from the from the long-term. So short-term stress, uh, the value is minus uh, twelve point nine for long-term stress in the in the concrete is minus. 12.1 you can see that the changes wasn't so marginal also uh, it has an effect on the reinforcement where is the keep the rule uh, 0.8 times uh, plasticity of the of the rebars so 400 megapascals for b 500 b uh, yeah so uh, service service limit state like um, uh, stress limitation is okay and we can we can check the cracks uh, so in the cracks, uh, we are using uh, rotating cracks, so uh, you can see the uh, redistribution of the cracks and the propagation of the cracks with the maximal value, which is which is uh, at this point. If I will go closer and hit the right button, so I can also uh, display. I can also I can also display the chart. Uh, I don't 
don't know why it's not right now. I can display that. Okay, doesn't matter. But uh, the maximal the maximal crack is uh, yeah 0 0.11 millimeters. So we are on the 37 percent of the utilization. We are perfectly fine. And according to the assumption that here will be the ma maximal crack uh, in the bottom in the bottom of the of the beam. Uh, we can move on to the to the deflection where you can display a deformed shape. So if I if I scale it a little bit, so you can see how it's how it's deformed, uh, how works the boundary conditions, and uh, you can also display the short term short term deflection, uh, some long term deflection, and some increment due to the variable variable load and the total deflection. So. Um, this is all for uh, for the uh, for the code check, and uh, we can move on to the to the report, uh, where you can print it out the reports to the Word document or to the PDF. Uh, it's fully customizable according to you, so you can set up uh, uh, the geometry, loads, uh, reinforcement, and the results uh, according to your own. Uh, uh, necessity. Uh, so at first you will see the materials uh, which are used, the geometry, uh, some loads, I mean the combinations for ultimate limit state, serviceability limit state, prescription rules, some scheme of the reinforcement and uh, the results. Here are displayed all results, all detailed results which we went through so it's uh, yeah you can you can see it here and print it out so uh this is this is all for uh for the modeling so if i uh, come back to the to the presentation <clears throat> yeah we we went through uh the code check uh, in the detail and uh, if I sum it up, why to use why to use application uh, detail? So um, uh, in the behind, the application detail is running the CSF method. It's a compatible stress field method, which is which is behind. Um, it uh, saves you the time because uh, you know, uh, or how you could see uh, the design. Uh, with using the simplified method like a strut and tie, uh, you spend there more uh, more hours uh, with the optimization iterations uh, and the others. So if you if you uh, use the uh, detail or CSFM method, uh, it saves you uh, the time and uh, also the iteration steps, uh, which are really important for uh, optimization and. Uh, uh, and the code check. So uh, also the material uh, will be saved um, uh, because because uh, you will see uh, the stresses and uh, the, def the deformations, and you can you can you can optimize. And uh, what is really important, you are getting uh, the code check according to the wallet standards. So uh, you are you are completely you are completely safe according according to the code. Uh, there is a time for a Q and A. Uh, uh, if you have some, yeah. So um, we can we can skip this part. Uh, there are no no questions, uh, and uh, please don't quit uh, because the next webinar will be uh, on the thirty first thirty first August. Uh, it will the topic will be for uh, connection welds and bolts. Uh, from our uh, company in the US, so I would like to invite you on this uh, on this webinar. <clears throat> Please, after webinar, filling out the short survey uh, where uh, where you can put some marks, um, and uh, the recording uh, will be delivered to our support center or YouTube uh, till three days. And uh, if you would like to use Idea Statica and uh, you don't have a license, so you can get a trial version uh, for 14 days. If you jump into ideastica.com and uh, yeah, there is a 
trial version for downloading and all the necessary documents uh, like uh, tutorials, knowledge bases are in our support center, uh, in our support center um, on the on the web page ideastica.com. So uh, thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward for the for the next session. So see you and uh, bye bye.